The most constant thought that ran through the back of my mind in the time I spent with Monarch is the one thought that perfectly encapsulates my feelings on the game as a whole. And that's the fact Monarch should be an enjoyable game, but isn't. What I mean by this is that it's evident what the devs are going for with Monarch. It just fails in execution on almost all fronts and ends up being pretty mediocre as a result overall. The game takes place in a school where strange things are happening, like a mist appearing that drives people mad, and mysterious cell phone calls that transport the receiver to an alternate plane with deadly skeletal enemies. This world that Monarch tries to build is genuinely interesting and in the first opening segment I was intrigued with what it could do and where it would go with such a unique setting. The game also has this horror overtone to it and tries to draw inspiration in its themes from psychology and religion. Though sadly a lot of it is really surface level and doesn't amount to adding much to the game in ways it could've. You control a silent protagonist with amnesia and are immediately thrust into your mist filled school. And of course you have to find out what's behind the mist, get rid of it, and learn the truth about your missing memories. You're also tasked with taking down pack bearers, characters that exude an excess amount of one of the seven daily sins and are usually the game's major bosses and sometimes party members. The game takes place throughout the school and its multiple buildings, and because of this Monarch has no real dungeon. Instead, you explore levels of the school while solving puzzles, usually tedious and boring puzzles that ruin the game's already poor pacing. Honestly, exploration is really dull and the same looking locations of the school don't help in this regard. And while you're wandering the school halls, you have a madness gauge that slowly rises as a result of you being in mist infested areas. When it reaches 100, you'll be thrust back to the school's infirmary, though the fact you can fast travel to the infirmary and back to relatively where you were before makes the gauge almost pointless and more of an annoyance in my opinion, at least outside of battle, because madness also plays a role in combat. Before I talk about madness in combat though, let's go over combat in general. When exploring the school, you'll sometimes either get random calls on your phone that when answered will transfer you to the battlefield, or because of story reasons you'll find a stack of phones lying around that when clicked will also transfer you to the battlefield. These battlefields can be a little expansive with hazards in the way like walls or poison fields, but you move your allies around until you're close enough to strike your enemies in pretty typical turn-based combat. Positioning does matter since back attacks that deal more damage are a thing, and when you surround an enemy, your other allies can join in for support attacks to help shape off HP. Your skills range from basic attacks to authority skills, skills that act more like traditional magic or have more complex effects like applying debuffs. Though your authority skills also raise your mag gauge more, which in battles when you reach 100 make you go into a berserk state, or as the game calls it, state of madness, where you attack enemies and allies alike. The other gauge to pay attention to is the awake gauge, which raises what the more damage you take in battle, and when activated it gives you a big buff in all your stats. You can also forfeit a character's turn to give it to an ally that's already moved to add another layer of strategy. The mechanics of the game don't reinvent the wheel in any type of way, but I didn't find them to be bad by any stretch of the imagination. In fact, the combat was probably the most solid part of the game that I had no real complaints with. And battles are surprisingly challenging too, enemies hit hard and are not afraid of getting up on one of your characters. The levels in this game are a bit strange, since you don't gain regular EXP in battles. Instead, after every battle you get more of a resource called Spirit, which you accumulate to both buy consumable items and gain skills on your character's skill trees. And gaining skills on your skill tree is how you gain levels, with every skill you obtain also increasing your general stats. And the kicker is that all your characters share Spirit, so it can get very scarce. It's a weird system that I was not a fan of. Also, I should mention that all regular enemies in this game are skeletons, and you also have your own skeletons that you can upgrade and lightly customize. While they look a bit more cool as you progress in the game, at the end of the day, 95% of what you're going to be fighting in Monarch is skeletons, and it gets old very quick. Like I said though, repetitive skeletons aside, the battle system was probably the part of the game I enjoyed the most. Now visually, Monarch is nothing to write home about at least in-game. The character models are very dated, especially when you compare it to more recent RPGs like Tales of Arise and Scarlet Nexus that just look phenomenal. And I of course already touched on the bland environments. It's a shame about the in-game visuals because the character art that you see in their portraits is great, stylish, and very expressive, which just makes the contrast to the actual game that much more painful. On the audio side, the game has some pretty standout tracks, with the unique themes each boss has in particular usually being far better than they should be. 
But sadly, the voice acting in the English version ranges from good to kind of insufferable and over the top. Your main character's little sister being the biggest culprit of this. That's the biggest, most unfortunate reoccurring theme with Monarch. Things that are okay being overshadowed by other aspects of the game that just bring down the entire experience. And it's frustrating because there's signs of what could have been a good, enjoyable game here. You can tell the devs want to make this an ambitious title with this theme, setting, and tone, but what you're left with is a JRPG that just feels like a chore to play through. 